Okay, our next stop is to think about um, putting some uncertainty into the decision making that businesses do. And, and one way to do that is to think about different states of the world. Um, we actually have already done this a little bit in that we say, for example, in a previous lecture that $100 now may be worth $102 in a year, right? And given a choice between $100 now and $102 later, you wouldn't be sure which you would prefer. And we can think about those as different as different states. So um, now it might occur in one version and later might occur in a different version, right? And we can map from one to the other in a way that these, these have prices, right? So getting $100 now is worth $100 now, and getting $102 later is worth $100 now. And we could even think about, you know, $104 and some change later, later, and, and so on, right? So we have different states of the world that have a different value, and in the case of time, it's because of interest rates. Um, but in fact, there are more states that can occur than just um, time passing, right? So, um, for example, we, when we think about people, we say that um, they could be in a happy state or a depressed state. And if I wake up in the morning, I don't necessarily know which I will be at 5 o'clock in the evening, right? I might be happy by then or I might be... Um, a little mopey by then, who, who knows, right? So um, there are different states of the world that can occur and maybe different things happen. So um, for example, maybe when I'm happy, I go to the gym and when I'm not happy, I go get a black and tan from Leatherbees. Um, so we have different possible things that can occur and these different states of the world can have different financial outcomes. Um, I'll give you a good example would be if we have a heat wave, this will cost large commercial um, office buildings a money in um, increased cooling costs, right? So the, the hotter it gets, the more expensive it is to cool large buildings. These are different states, so we could think about having different weather states, and the different weather states have different financial outcomes. And so that's what we're going to do to start introducing uncertainty into decision making. Um, and the most important set of states we're thinking about is the macroeconomic states of recession and um, expansion. Right, so if we are in a re recession state, our money will, well, we will, our, our businesses will have different financial outcomes in a recession state than they will in an expansion state. So Brunswick, again, is that great example where being in a recession state, state is extremely damaging for their business, whereas um, a different business like... Uh, you know, for example, Walmart. So Walmart is going to lose customers on the low end who no longer can afford to buy as much at Walmart, but also might benefit from customers that previously were shopping at higher end stores that now shop at Walmart because they're feeling the financial squeeze. Um, so, it, so we can think about maybe $100 in a recession or $102 in a recession being worth um, $100 in an expansion and vice versa, right? Give it the choice between $102 in an expansion and $100 in a recession, we might be indifferent. Um, so there's a 2% difference there between those two states, but it's not an interest rate, right? We're not traveling through time. We're just expressing a difference in the value of money in different um, macroeconomic states. And so a way to simplify this is to think about how much would it cost me to purchase a security that pays me exactly $1 in exactly one state. 
So if our two states are recession and expansion, I, an error to Boy Security would pay exactly one dollar in a recession and zero dollars in expansion. Or alternatively, a different one would pay zero dollars in a recession and one dollar in an expansion. But both of these are arrow to Boy Securities because they um, pay a dollar in a certain state of the world. And in that case now, what if I bought one of the first security and one of the second security? Well, now I'm going to get going to get one dollar no matter what, right? Because one of my securities will pay in a recession, and one of my the other security will pay in an expansion. And so then this just becomes a matter of interest rates because they won't pay for probably a year or two or however long it was until it was resolved. Okay, so that's um, that's an, that's a portfolio of Aero de Bruyne securities, um, and that's often how we we'll use them. So um, you can think about uh, an example of well, let's see. So if I have um, if I have uh, a, a hot dog cart and I'm selling hot dogs, I can make a hundred dollars if it's sun shining, and I can make thirty dollars if it's raining. Oh, that would mean that that hot dog cart is equivalent in cash flows to 100 Aero de Broy Sunny Securities and 30 Aero de Broy Rainy Securities. So to find the value of the hot dog cart to us, we would pay find the price for the find the price for the sunny securities and find the price for the rainy securities and then buy 100 of the first and 30 of the second. And and so the, and that would give us an overall price of you know so maybe this is forty cents for sunny, and fifty cents for rainy, so we would have forty dollars because because forty cents times a hundred would be forty dollars, and then um, uh, we had thirty dollars. We need thirty of the rainy ones and the rainy ones are 50 cents each so that's um fifteen dollars so we have 40 and sunny and 15 and rainy making a total of 55 and that would be a valuation of the business itself including an understanding about uncertainty okay so let's do an example of different of a state's problem so suppose i have an empty parking lot and it can be either a hotel or a garage um when one is available, the other is not, so there's only two states, right? So either we're going to do the hotel or we're going to do the garage. We can't do both. Okay. Um, we are going to estimate that in um, the event of getting $1, so sorry, uh, $1 of payoff in the hotel future costs $0.40 cents today and $1 in the parking lot future costs $0.55. Cents. Okay, now again, remember this is not, um, I don't put 40 cents in and get a dollar. I put 40 cents in and maybe get a dollar, right? I, I get a dollar if hotel happens. And if I put um, 55 cents in, I'll get a dollar if parking lot happens. Okay, so why, why do these add up to 95 cents? Well, because if I buy one of each, I'm guaranteed to get a dollar in the future. But that's in the future, so we need to have an interest rate effect going on. Okay, so let's imagine that we're thinking about buying this land. Um, and to, if we buy the land, then we'll have the option to do the hotel or the parking lot. Um, if the hotel is going to work, it will be worth $18. And if the parking lot is going to work, it will be worth five. So you can see right away, these tie directly into Arrow to Boy Securities. We're buying this, this business proposition, this land, is essentially a portfolio of 18 hotels, 18, you know, 18 hotel dollars and five parking lot dollars. So what should we pay? Well, we should pay whatever price we, we cost to get a hotel dollar and whatever price it costs to get a parking lot dollar. Um, from the previous slide, that's 40 cents and 55 cents. And so that means we wouldn't pay more than 9.95 for the land because that's the value of what we're getting out of the land Um, 
on average, in the sense that we're, if we if we get paid a fair price, then we would pay nine ninety five for that. And so anything less than that will be a good buy. Okay, so that's that's an example of a of an option. So we have this is a an option, but you have the option to do the hotel or the parking lot. Okay, um, stock options themselves work very similar. So um, suppose that we're following a particular stock. Um, let's just say Apple. And so for 90 cents, I can I can get a dollar in both up and down. And for a dollar 30, I can get a dollar in down and two dollars in up from a stock. So we're going to make a portfolio of these. So we're going to buy the stock and sell the bond. So if I buy the stock, I get one dollar in down. And if I sell the bond, I get one dollar in down. So those cancel, so I get nothing in down. Whereas the two ups um, leaves one up compared to the to the one up in the in the uh, bond we're selling. And so what's left, right, is zero down securities, or sorry, zero up securities and one down security. Well, we know that that whole portfolio costs 40 cents, right? Because I paid 130 for the stock and I got 90 cents from selling the bond. So I, I have an overall expenditure of 40 cents and 40 cents gets me $1 in the um, stock state. And um, yeah, $1 in the stock state. So that $1 actually only costs 40 cents but again, we don't always get it, right? Sometimes we pay 40 cents and get um, nothing if, if we get unlucky, um, right? If the, if, the other, um, if the other option is favored, okay? So, so this is important, right? I, nowhere in here did I give you any arrow to bright prices, right? I said for 90 cents, oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so for 90 cents, I can get $1 in both up and down, right? So I have a 90 cent bond and a $1.30 stock. And I combined those two, and I got an implication for the price of an arrow to broy up and an arrow to broy down, um, which are respectively 40 cents and 50 cents. So to get um, 0, 1, right, to get 0, 1, that's one up, I'd pay 40 cents. And that's what we figured out, right? A dollar 30 minus 90 is 40 cents. Suppose I have a stock option that pays zero in the down and six in the up. What's it worth? Okay, so just take a moment and try to figure it out. Okay, this is quite easy actually, right? I have zero down securities and six up securities. We already established that ups are 40 cents, right? So it's two dollars and 40 cents to buy a security that pays zero in the down and six in the up. If we change it to six in the down, it's a little bit more, right? It was 55 cents instead of 40 cents. So why would six dollars and the down be more expensive than six dollars and up? Well, again, remember when we're down, that means the economy is struggling and money is more precious. And so if we have an investment that pays us when the economy is down, that's going to be attractive and will um, bid up the price. Um, this, so this is true to real life in that put options are generally more expensive than call options per dollar of payoff because, um, after taking probabilities into account, because, the, um, because they provide money in a time pattern of consumption that's very profitable preferable right we you only get options um to you only get options um to to you know in, in circumstances where you're getting money some of the time and so um if the some of the time is a time when the economy is doing poorly or would be doing poorly, then we, then um, that option can command a higher price. Okay, so um, obviously the, the, these examples were set up a little bit, so how do we do this generally? So um, the best way to do it is to do guess and check using Excel Solver. So I have a, 
I have an, ex uh, uh, an Excel example here. So, um, oh, let's see. Let me open. This is the one we were working on from last time. I have it in your um, on the course page. So just a sec. Let's get to our week three here. I know that you can't see my whole screen. You'll be able to in a minute. I just have to open this. All right, low, loading. Here we go. Once that opens, I'll move it in. I, when I do a screen share, I get these um, little sparkly corners. You obviously can't see them, but I can see them. And uh, yeah, so let's, oh, let's see. All right, Arrow Dubois. What's happening? So that's a that's the one from before, and then this guy. Where'd he go? Well, kind of being invisible. All right, let's minimize. There we go. It's a funky little trick there. Okay, so here's our scenario. We have actually four things. We have a risk-free bond. And you can see it's risk-free, right? It pays 10, 10, 10, 10. And we, and we have here a risky bond. A risky bond pays um, less money if things get really bad and less money if things get really good because then interest rates rise and the price declines. Here's our stock. It just does better the better the stock the market does. And then a call option is an option to buy a stock at a specified price. And those um, expire worthless if the stock goes down, but they become very valuable if the stock goes up. Okay, so let's just think about this in terms of state prices. So what if the state price of these is 20 cents each? Okay, now uh, this is just a pure guess, right? This, this, I'm sure this is not right, but I've just got to guess here. So if this is true, right, we can think about the price of the risk-free bond as equal to this times this plus this times this plus this times this plus that times that. All right, why? Right, my risk-free bond is a portfolio of 10 recession securities, 10 slow, 10 normal, and 10 boom. And all of those cost 20 cents. And I'm going to actually lock in this row seven here, right? Because I want to check it for all of our securities, right? So this is our estimate of the risk-free price. And if I drag down, I get an estimate for of all the other prices. So you can see, right, my guess, not so smart. All right, this is not the same as this. Okay, so what I'm going to do, this is kind of a solver trick. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a set of cells that is the difference between this and this. And actually, I'm going to square it. Just so that way we don't get any negatives, right? We don't want any negative numbers canceling our error out. So this is like a, it's kind of like our error here, right? So we got the call option pretty well, but the bonds are just off. Okay, and I'm going to sum this. So sum these. Okay, so we're off by um, 5.3 in, in squared error. We want that to go to zero, right? We want to be right. So what we're going to do, we're going to go to data, go to solver, and in our solver here, we want to make, what's our objective? Our objective is to get this thing as small as possible, right? We want it to just get tiny. So what are we changing? What are we changing? Well, when we do solver, we change our guess. And our guess was these prices, right? So we guessed those prices. And it's a bad guess. That's why we didn't get the right answer. Um, in general, it's a good idea to uncheck this. And let's go ahead and solve it and see what happens. Now, this is going to do guess and check on all of those prices to try to minimize that error. Okay, it says it found something. Okay, and here we go. So now 
You can see these prices are now very similar. I've got 960, 940, 890, $1.8. These are all very similar. And I have now state prices, right? 46, 38, negative 21, and 32. Okay. Um, when this situation happens, we'd actually say that this economy has arbitrage. Because what does that mean? That means that what if you and I had a deal and it was, okay, tell you what, you pay me, you pay me zero in a recession, zero in a slow, one in a normal, and zero in a boom, right? So you're going to pay me, but only in a normal. Okay, so naturally you would expect that I would have to pay you, right? Maybe I'll give you 20 cents and then sometimes you give me a dollar and that would be a fair trade. But in this economy, you paying me a dollar means I get to say, okay, you pay me 21 cents and then sometime in the future, you might need to pay me a dollar. Okay. So you're, you are, you're thinking, well, why would you rationally do that ever? And the answer is really, you wouldn't. Um, but sometimes maybe you're not noticing that's what you're doing. It'd be like um, going to the gas station with if they had two different prices at two different gas stations and you bought gas from one and sold gas to the other, um, after a while they're going to figure you out because they're going to need to change prices because the one gas station will be running out of gas and the other one will have too much gas. And so they're, they'll adjust prices until that situation doesn't happen anymore. So it's the same here. These traded prices of those four securities are creating a situation where, um, where the normal has a negative state price. Um, I have done estimates of state prices using, the, um, using uh, options on stock market indices, and you do get slightly negative state prices sometimes. But, um, but on you, you in general you get a you get a curve that has a nice smooth curve to it with the more likely in stock index outcomes being more valuable than the other ones, um, but then there's some wiggle so there's some random noise in it that makes it dip negative sometimes but in general the state prices across a broad spectrum of possible futures are positive. And this is just an example of how you would find them. So again, right, you, you give a guess for state prices and then see what market prices were implied by your state prices and then make those two sets of things match using Solver. Okay, so that was our Excel demonstration. So how can we use this maybe in practice? So let's imagine we've got a semiconductor manufacturer um, that is thinking about building a new fab for $4 billion. When this happens in the semiconductor industry, they come up with a smaller nanometer process and they want to upgrade their, um, their plant and make uh, more dense chips that are faster. So if you want to invest $4, $4 billion in the fab, we need to build the building for two years and then install the equipment. Or sorry, build the building for one year and install the equipment over one year. Um, if we build the plant, we get six billion up securities and negative. Um, I think this should actually be five billion um, downs. So we've got up for forty cents and down for fifty-five cents. So we can ask: Is this a good idea? Well, um, we, our our project is a portfolio, right? It's a portfolio of six billion ups and negative five billion downs. So we can say, well, the, the total value should just be the mark, the value of those two things combined. Right? So if we do a quick calculation, you get negative 0.35. So what does that mean? It means that if we spend the $4 billion to, to build the fab, the fab, we would, on average, have destroyed $350 million of shareholder value. So, and it's not that this fab, the, the semiconductor fab isn't, um, I mean, it's not generating revenues. It, it is, it's just that we have a pretty significant chance of the, of losing a large amount of money and we lose a large amount of money 
at the same time when we desperately want money because we're in a down state. So those powers combined make this project not worth doing. Um, but wait, right? So but wait, pun intended. So how do we wait? So we wait by building the building and then decide whether or not we're going to go through it. And if we know by the time we finish building the, the building whether or not it's going to be a good idea, then we can have the option to wait or not. So um, if we're waiting, we get 6 minus 3.9 because right it's $4 billion to get started, but we already spent $100 million building the building. So we would get 6 minus 3.9 up securities and zero down securities. Okay, why do we get zero down securities this time? Because we're not going to do it if it's down. Right? So if the economy is bad, we're not going to do it. So it's not going to cost us $4 billion, and it's not going to get us money either. Um, I mean, a negative $5 billion. And so, um, yes, yeah, so we get zero in the down, but we get six minus what we invested in the up. And so now we have a new estimate of the value, and we can see that, that it will be positive, right? There's $2.1 um, billion total. It's just this $2.1 billion in the up, which translates to, right, so if I have 6 minus 3.9, that's my 2.1 billion um, in profit in, if we get to the up state. And then um, we multiply by 40 cents is what it costs us. And then we subtract off the 100,000 we already put in and we get this number. Um, and so, uh, we that ends up being positive, right? So on average, we're we're going to be positive, and so having the option to wait, well, taking the option to wait, and then deciding whether or not it's a good idea to go forward after we've invested um, a year's worth of effort um, can be has switched the project from being a terrible project, don't do it, to being a project worth doing. So this can be a little counterintuitive, right? What we're saying is that a company builds a giant factory floor and doesn't even turn it on and maybe puts it immediately for sale. So this would, you would it's the kind of stuff you would expect to see people um, in outrage about on the internet. But it turns out to be, make good financial sense. Essentially buying that empty building is punching your ticket at a, at a chance to have um, uh, at a chance to win that's pretty significant. And so the, the land purchase is a ticket punch price. And as long as the NPV of what happens is higher than the um, that initial investment, we you end up ahead. Okay, so there's a couple examples for you to try at the end of the slides. Um, we, we're not really going to have um, homework on this specific content. Um, the quiz this week is um, the quiz this week uh, should be available on the on the learning management system, um, but it's it's uh, covering uh, last week's content. Um, but yeah, the, the Aaron O'Brien securities are are powerful. Um, securities are a great way to do these kind of numerical calculations and they allow us to incorporate uncertainty into making our decisions. And, and not only uncertainty in what would occur, but also um, incorporating the price of that uncertainty into our decision making. Or if we can find the implied error to Broy prices, we can see what value the marketplace um, broadly places on different states. And so um, they're a pretty, pretty neat tool um, that you would probably encounter more later if you continue on in your study of finance.